Hi there, it's Jason Gorman from Codemanship with the fifth video in our series on test-driven development in C Sharp. This is going to be a two-parter and we're going to be exploring two different approaches to test-driven design. One is inside out where we test drive, if you like, the pieces of our implementation jigsaw and then we put the jigsaw together at the end. And the other approach is outside in where we drive our internal implementation design from the outside in, for example, from an external interface. And we discover the internal design, often through the process of refactoring the internal code, um, so that the internal design emerges as a consequence of passing those high-level external tests. And we'll discuss the relative advantages and disadvantages of both approaches. Now, if you've not watched the... Uh, the previous videos in this series, I highly recommend you take a look at those first. There'll be a link in the description below. I'm going to be, first of all, illustrating inside out TDD um, using the Mars rover example that we used in the previous videos. Now, if you recall from that video, um, it's very, very straightforward. We have a Mars rover which is dropped onto an idealized grid representing the surface of Mars made up of x, y coordinates. So we could drop it, for example, at 5, 5. And we can face it in a particular, we can orient it in a particular direction when we drop the rover, north, east, south and west. And then we can turn it right and left and we can move it backwards and forwards and that will change either the direction it's facing in or its position on the grid in that particular direction or in the opposite direction if we're moving backwards. So very, very straightforward. And I'm going to tackle this first inside out. So I'm going to imagine the pieces of this jigsaw. For example, we're going to need a method for turning the rover to the right. So I'm going to make a start on that. Write the assertion first and work backwards. Start with the what. And let's imagine we have a rover. I've got auto completion turned off. Otherwise... You tend to find if you're working backwards, it will get in the way if, you're, if it's trying to fill in the gaps here. Um, we want that to be a local variable, really. And it doesn't want to do that. So in that case, let's do it ourselves. We've got a rover. So now let's create that type. Ah, it's a dot. That's what's happened there. That's why, okay. Let's create that type. There we go. So far, so good. Let's declare this. Let's go with get only to begin with. We don't need much more than that. Okay. Let's initialize our rover by dropping it so that it is facing... Let's say it's facing north, so we're going right from north to east. Okay, let's work backwards and create that constructor there. And that's the direction that we're facing in. And what we're going to do is we're going to tell the rover to turn right. So this really is an internal detail of our design. In the finished rover design, the API, if you like, is going to be an interface that accepts strings of characters, R for right, L for left, F for forward, and B for back. But what we're doing is we're designing the internal, the pieces of the jigsaw, if you like, that's going to make this happen. It's complaining because I've turned off auto-completion. That's fine. Don't complain about that, please, rider. And let's create that method for turning right. And we don't want these. We're going to run the test and make sure that it does fail for the right reasons. So we don't want these for throwing new implementation. In fact, oops. Let's now switch that off while we're here. So let's go into settings. And if we look under for um, somewhere here, member generation. Okay, so what we're going to do instead is say no, just return a default value if it has a return type. So it's not going to keep generating that, which is just going to annoy me. Okay, and so we're customizing Rider to do it the way we like to do it. Let's save that and run our test and see it fail. 
any second now there we go okay yeah so our test assertion is actually failing because it's not facing east now we can do the simplest thing to make it face east which would be I suppose just that should do it let's rerun our tests Okay, so far so good. So this is very, very similar to what you would have seen me do in the previous video, except that I'm not driving these tests directly through the, our, our planned API for passing sequences of instructions to the rover. I'm actually test driving internal details. So if we skip forward a bit, you'll find that there's going to be a left method, there's going to be a forward method, there's going to be a back method. Um, and then we will kind of wire it together at the end. So I'm going to pause recording here and I'm going to carry on with this exercise and hopefully you'll see when we come back that we've test driven all of the internal details of our design and then we're ready to wire the thing together at the end. So we fast forward a little bit and I've written a bunch of tests for each of these sort of pieces of our jigsaw for our Mars rover. So we, we've got a test here, you can see, is directly calling an internal method called right um, for checking that it can turn right. We've got one for turning left. And we've got one for moving forwards, one for moving backwards. And we've also got one down here at the bottom that checks that we actually get the right method, right, left, forward, or back, depending on the character representing that particular instruction, that particular action. So these are all the pieces of our jigsaw, and the last piece of the jigsaw, really, is to tie it all together into uh, the external sort of interface, which is going to be a method that accepts a sequence of these characters, a string of characters, basically, a string of actions, forward, back, left, right, and... Um, interprets those and executes them. So what we're going to do is we're going to write this final test. So we want to know if it executes a sequence of uh, instructions. Okay, assert first and we're backwards. So let's imagine here that we're going to, a short sequence, so we're going to turn it to the right, so if it's north it'll end up facing east. Um, let's work backwards from there. So there's our rover. So let's have it facing north to begin with. And let's start it in a, a position like um, 5, 5. And what we're going to do is we're going to, eventually we're going to tell it to move forward when it's facing east two squares. So it should end up at seven five so that's going to be our sequence of instructions okay okay so let's imagine let's call it go that's a nice name for a method so we're going to ask you to go to the right and then forward and forward this method in our rover okay and when we run this it's not actually going to do anything which is what we expect so it's not going to not going to be facing east and it's not going to have moved on the grid okay so we've got one failing test that's just yeah so this the test is failing because it's not facing in the right direction it's not moved okay now before we make this test pass let's just take a look inside our Mars rover here so we've got all these methods for right and for left 
and for forward and for back and for looking up the right kind of actions. There's been a little bit of refactoring but, um, to remove some duplication. So I extracted this move method for forward and back both to use. And I extracted this turn method for right and left both to use. So there's been a little bit of refactoring, but for the most part, I've actually made decisions about the internal design while I was writing the tests. So um, that's kind of where we ended up here. So it's mostly been upfront thinking about the design while we write the tests with a little bit of refactoring internally. Okay, now how do we make this pass? Well, let's imagine that we need a, a list of characters that will represent our actions in the sequence. So we can convert this to a character array. Oops. And then we'll convert that to a list. Okay, so we've got our sequence of instructions and it's innumerable, so we should be able to do a for each on this. So for each of these actions, let's find the right action, the right method to call for that action. And then let's just invoke it. Okay, so hopefully we'll end up now with the rover having turned to the right and moved forward two squares. Good, all our tests are passing. So that's inside out TDD. We test drive the pieces of the jigsaw for our solution, if you like, and then we, we put that jigsaw together at the end um, with some kind of high level test, like the, the test for our Go method here. One of the advantages of this approach is that um, if you look at our tests here, they're very specific about what part of the internal design they're testing. So if a test fails, let's say, for example, this test fails, finds action for instruction. Um, well, there's only one method that it could go wrong there. So the error is somewhere in there. It pinpoints the error. Or if our test fails for turning right, well, if we take a look again in our call stack, let's just scroll back up. That means that it either went wrong here or it went wrong somewhere in our turn method here. So having these more kind of internal, detailed, specific um, tests makes it much easier to pinpoint um, not just what's gone wrong, but where it's gone wrong in our call stack. And if you have a deep call stack, if we're looking at a complex, multi-layered um, application, then you will find that it's useful to have tests that kind of point to where the problem is more accurately, more precisely. So they have that advantage, definitely. In terms of disadvantages, well, let's take a look at this test code now. Um, it knows a lot about the internal design of our rover. It knows that it has a method for turning right, it knows it has a method for turning left and for forward and for back and so on and so forth. So a lot of the internal details are exposed, which means that our, our rover is unencapsulated. And what that leads to is test code that is very tightly coupled. It knows too much about the internal design. And when you have tests that are tightly coupled to the internal design, then it becomes much more difficult to change and refactor and evolve that internal design because we have to change a lot of the test code as well. So the disadvantage of working from the inside out is that we end up with test code that maybe hugs the internal design a bit too tightly um, and doesn't want to let go. So it can make life more difficult for us going later, uh, more difficult later. Um, the other disadvantage of working from the inside out of starting by writing tests for the individual pieces of the jigsaw is that there's a risk that when we try to put the pieces of the jigsaw together they don't fit that we've got the wrong pieces we've got the wrong interfaces if you like um, and this is a very real risk particularly on more complex designs and i've seen this happen many times where teams have divided up work into individual sort of components if you like and each person or pair has gone away and worked on their component they're part of the jigsaw and they've come back together and tried to integrate them and what they've failed to do is actually deliver something that, that satisfies the end user requirement so 
by focusing on the internal de uh, details we often end up taking our eyes off the prize and coming up with um, internal parts internal pieces that don't fit or don't satisfy an end user requirement when we try to put them together so advantage of working inside out is you end up with tests that pinpoint problems very easily um, you tend to find you don't spend a lot of time in the debugger for example so that's a good thing but the disadvantage is you, you end up with test code that is too tightly coupled to the internal design which will make the internal design harder to change uh, later and you end up you face the very real risk that the pieces of the jigsaw won't fit when you try to put them together so that's inside out tdd in the next video we're going to look at how we can do the same essentially tackle the same kind of design the mars rover but tackle it from the outside in so look out for part two of this video coming soon